Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from University of Delhi and today we shall discuss some aspect of central nervous system. You know that central nervous system that is CNS includes primarily bone and the reflex arc or spinal cord. Today we should start our discussion with brain. Brain is an important organ in our body. It commands and controls almost every part of the body and every function of the body. It controls voluntary organs, involuntary organs, all the endocrine glands, thermoregulation that is maintenance of temperature in the body, endocrine gland secretions, circadian rhythm and total behavior of person in general is controlled by brain. So brain becomes very important to understand how it functions and what are its different parts and how they monitor total activity of our body. Brain is a complex organ and it has complex functions to perform. Every part of brain is given different duty and it performs its duty in a very, very specific manner throughout our lives. Before we go into the details of internal structures, and their functions. Let us first see how brain is located in our body and how it is protected. Of course, you know that brain is located in our head area or skull. Now it is important to know how it is protected. It is a soft tissue and very important, very sensitive, so it should have proper protection. The first protection is skull. We know skull is made up of hard bones which are sutured in between to give it a good shape and brain is present within this skull but that is not enough. Other than that we have cranial meninges. The word cranial comes from cranium. Meninges means membranes and they are present within skull outside the brain that means between brain and the skull. Now these meninges are named durameter, arachnoid and pyometer. Durameter is the first meninges present just after the skull and pyometer is the meninges or the membrane which is present just outside the brain tissue. Between the two is a thin membrane called arachnoid. A fluid is filled between these membranes. You can imagine that skull is hard and brain tissue is very, very soft. Between these two, there are three membranes enclosing two compartments which is filled with fluid which will now supply cushion to this brain tissue. And that is why our brain tissue though it is very soft but it is well protected. You can also visualize if there is a road accident and brain is hurt or head is hurt very badly so that there is a hole or crack in the skull. You may see some fluid coming out and that fluid is the fluid of these meninges. Once that fluid comes out then brain cannot be held in its original position and it will settle down to one direction this side or that side and that will create damage to the brain and that is the reason why head injury is supposed to be so serious. Once the brain tissue is disturbed from its location and the nerve cells of the brain tissue are disturbed from their placement inside the brain then our centers in the brain cannot function normally and that is how the head injury or brain injury will give lot of damage to the body. Our brain which is very specialized structure is divided into three parts, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. In fact these divisions we have made 
in order to understand the brain structure in a nice way. Four brain which is very important part and by and large the greatest part of the brain it has cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. Cerebrum is the largest area of the brain. It is divided into two parts. We call each cerebral hemisphere and they are connected by corpus callosum. They are rather a stitched kind by corpus callosum and this area looks like baby. It is folded and that is the cerebral cortex or in other words the outer membrane of cerebrum or cerebral hemisphere is thrown into many folds and it looks grey. Now why it is thrown into folds? To increase the surface area. We have to use brain for so many things. So its surface area should be more but it cannot be bigger than our head because we are lodging it in our head. So area has to be within our head and if we want to increase the area further we have to fold it. And that is the reason the cortex, the cerebral cortex is highly folded and that is why it looks like the picture is shown on the slide. I would like to show you the folded cerebral cortex. You can see in this picture the cerebral cortex is so folded that and it is increasing the surface area. These are the folds and this is all cerebral cortex in other words nerve cells of cerebral hemispheres. Another thing it is grey in colour that is why we say grey matter. Now what do we mean by grey matter? Perhaps I have explained in some earlier sessions that in any nerve cell there is nerve cell body which has dendrites, nucleus, cytoplasm and then we have a long process called axon. Also dendrites can be many in number or maybe one, maybe two, maybe many but axon is always one. The cell body looks grey in colour whereas axonal part looks white due to myelin sheath and that will be called white matter in the area where the axon falls. So if cerebral cortex looks grey that means nerve cell bodies are here or the nerve cell bodies are lying in the superficial layers of cerebral cortex which has become very much folded in this case. I may like to give you some more details about cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex which is highly folded having large surface area is having sensory areas, motor areas, association areas. Sensory areas will look after sensory functions. You know what sensory function is or sensory function of a neuron you already know. Then motor areas will look after motor functions. But association area are large in number, bigger in size and have a special function to play that is intersensory functions will pass through association areas which will perform complex activity to make it possible. So association areas become the most important areas of cerebral cortex. Also the axons of all these neurons are myelinated that means they have myelin sheath and they are towards the inner side of cerebral cortex. So outer side looks grey if you go towards the center side or center of the brain you will find it white. We can also call it white matter. Please remember children that in brain tissue the outer part is grey matter, the central part is white matter whereas in case of a spinal cord it is going to be just the reverse. So children we have discussed about forebrain, the part of it cerebrum and now 
we are discussing about another part in forebrain called thalamus. Try to visualize that cerebral cortex is present on the upper side, the upper side of the head which you can feel by hand. Then goes down, we have white matter of cerebral cortex and it is enclosing and the very small structure called thalamus. You can see in this particular slide the thalamus which is important for sensory signaling and motor signaling. We all are aware of the fact that sensory functions and motor functions are important for our total body and that is governed directly or indirectly through a spinal cord or the brain or in short central nervous system. So, these signaling will go through thalamus and just below thalamus there is another small structure called hypothalamus which again has very important function to play. It is controlling center for various things in the body and to hypothalamus is attached a gland called pituitary gland which is master endocrine gland that is one thing. Other important thing is that neurosecretory centers are present in the hypothalamus which secrete hormones and they come down to neural lobe and is stored there. So, hypothalamus is performing not only nervous system work but also secretory work. I would like to show this into this diagram. You can see hypothalamus, this is hypothalamus and these are the neurosecretory nuclei. These are the nerve cells. This is the axon. It is going down to the neural lobe where it will be, the hormone will be stored. Perhaps while discussing endocrine system, I did tell you that these neurosecretory nuclei, they secrete two hormones, the oxytocin and vasopressin, which are stored in the neural lobe of the pituitary and are released if and when required by the body. So, these neurosecretory center make us believe that the nerve cells in this area have become secretory in nature. That means neurosecretory cells, they are the nerve cells which have achieved secretory activity as well and that is why we call them neurosecretory. These kind of cells are present only in hypothalamus. Thalamus and hypothalamus are part of forebrain but these two parts also along with hippocampus and amygdala form a limbic system which is an important system for our body. So, we have discussed forebrain today which includes cerebrum in the form of two cerebral hemispheres, the cerebral cortex, the sensory motor association areas, also thalamus which is involved with sensory and motor signaling and hypothalamus which not only has neurosecretory centers and the pituitary gland attached to it is also having centers to control thirst or to control hunger that is center for hunger and thirst. With this we come to the end of discussion of forebrain part of our brain. Thank you.